Thank you for watching this video. Yahweh makes Abraham a father of many nations. I will be using the name Yahweh when referring to the Heavenly Father and Yahshua when referring to the Messiah, the son of Yahweh. Yahweh's secrets are revealed in his parables. It was the time of love when Jerusalem entered into a covenant and became Yahweh's wife. She prospered into a kingdom and her beauty was perfect through Yahweh's glory which he had put upon her. She has fallen. She is ruined, cast down to the earth because she was contentious, rebellious, and disobedient. She was domineering and her tongue and her works were against Yahweh to provoke the eyes of his glory which is the face of her husband and she committed adultery. She will commit adultery with seven great kingdoms before Yahshua returns. These four kingdoms that will arise out of the feet are the four beasts of Daniel 7. They will transform one kingdom from another. The first kingdom that comes up is on the right foot. It is Great Britain which is transformed into the United Kingdom. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth, made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. See how man's history books verifies this interpretation. Yahweh says the first kingdom was like a lion. It had eagle's wings. The history books say at its zenith the British Empire stretched over one quarter of the earth's surface with a population of 400 to 500 million people. Its territories were scattered across every continent and ocean. The empire on which the sun never sets Yahweh says, I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. The history books say, the first half of the 20th century saw the UK's strength seriously depleted in two world wars. The aftermath of World War I saw the last major extension of the British rule, with British mandates over the former Ottoman territories of Palestine, Transjordan, Iraq, and Kuwait but the heavy cost of the war undermined her capacity to maintain the vast empire. The Second World War left Britain all but exhausted. Its strength was weakened by heavy debt. See how man's history books verify this interpretation of this kingdom is sure. Yahweh says this lion was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. The history books say the 1920s saw a rapid transformation of the status of the self-governing colonies, which is seen as the beginning of the British Commonwealth. The second half witnessed the dismantling of the empire and the UK rebuilding itself into a modern and prosperous European nation. Yahweh says a man's heart was given to it. The history books say the bloody partition and independence of India in 1947 deprived the empire of its heart and marked the beginning of the end for the British Empire. In 1927, the name being officially changed, the country became the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It is a member of the European Union. The second kingdom that will arise on the right foot is the United States of America. It was like to a bear and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it and they said thus unto it arise devour much flesh. The three ribs in the bear's mouth represents three Muslim nations. The first rib is Afghanistan. The second rib is Iraq. The third rib is Iran. Obama will bomb Iran's nuclear sites. Yahweh says this kingdom is like to a bear. 
The history books say the United States became the world's first modern democracy after its break with Great Britain. The U.S. remains the world's most powerful nation. Yahweh says it raised up itself on one side. The leopard's attack on the United States of America on 9-11-2001 by Al-Qaeda Islamic Jihad wounded the bear. This wound to the United States totally destroyed Lippo, the two world trade centers. This wound was represented in prophecy by the bear lifting up one foot. Yahweh says it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. America will avenge its wound upon three Muslim nations. The three ribs in the bear's mouth represents three Muslim nations and three presidents of these nations. The first rib in the bear's mouth represents Afghanistan and its leader Mohammed Omar. The second rib in the bear's mouth represents Iraq and its leader Saddam Hussein. The third rib in the bear's mouth represents Iran and its leader. Obama will bomb Iran's nuclear sites, which is represented in prophecy by the third rib in the bear's mouth. This kingdom is also weakened by heavy debt. These two nations fulfill the promise Yahweh made to Abraham when he said, I will make thee a father of many nations. Joseph's two horns are Great Britain, United Kingdom, and the United States of America. These two nations have preached the glad tidings of the kingdom of Yahweh in all the world for a witness to all nations. Then shall the end come. And these two nations also push all the nations on earth to accept Roman democracy and to unite together as a one world government at the ceasing of the earth or the time of the end. Joseph's glory is like the firstling of his bullock and his horns are like the horns of unicorns, like a wild bull's horns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, to the ceasing, the end, the finality of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. These two nations represent the two sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. When Abraham was blessed by Yahweh, he said, In blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Messiah Yahshua. These two nations will fulfill the promise Yahweh made to Abraham to multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. The blessing of Abraham was passed on to his son Isaac. Yahweh said, Unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my Torah laws. Abraham's blessing was then passed on to Jacob. Yahweh appeared unto Jacob and said, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. Jacob adopts Ephraim and Manasseh the day he dies so he can pass on Abraham's blessing to them instead of his firstborn son and his secondborn son, which was Reuben and Simeon. So Jacob adopts Ephraim and Manasseh and passes Abraham's blessing on to them. In verse 5, And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. 
Now Reuben was rejected because he slept with his father's concubine. And Simeon was rejected because of his anger in killing the men of Shechem. And he brought them unto him, and he kissed them, Ephraim and Manasseh, and embraced them. Israel stretched out his right hand upon Ephraim's head, the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head. Manasseh was the firstborn. Israel blessed Joseph by giving him the firstborn portion, two portions of all he had, instead of giving it to Reuben. Then he blesses Ephraim and Manasseh. And he said, The angel which redeemed me from all evil bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Manasseh also shall become a people, and he shall also be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he. And Ephraim's seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he set or placed Ephraim before Manasseh. Ephraim, Great Britain, would appear before the United States would. Ephraim, Great Britain, had the greater blessing. It would be the ten thousands of Ephraim and only one thousands of Manasseh, the United States. Ephraim, Great Britain, would have 77 t nation territories. These two nations would make a multitude of people, a multitude of assembly or congregations, who would be blessed by the blessing that Yahweh gave to Abraham and to his seed, meaning Yahshua the Messiah. These people would believe in the Messiah, Yahshua, the son of Yahweh. When Israel blessed Ephraim and Manasseh, he crossed his hands. He put his right hand upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger son. And he did that because Ephraim will be the first tribe of Israel to turn back to Yahweh. He will be the first to say, Arise! and let us go up to Zion unto Yahweh our Elohim. And Yahweh says, I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Ephraim will be the first tribe to say, What have I to do any more with idols? Israel put his left hand upon Manasseh's head because Manasseh will be the second tribe of Israel to turn back to Yahweh. Yahweh says, I will save the house of Joseph, for I have mercy upon them. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. How shall they hear without a preacher? And Yahweh has used Ephraim and Manasseh to preach the glad tidings to all the world. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Messiah hath redeemed us from the curse of the Torah, being made a curse for us, as it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahshua the Messiah, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Between these two feet is a stone. Israel is the stone, cut out in 1948 by Yahweh. Thou sawest tell that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote, the word smote is Mecca, M-E-C-H-A, 4223, Mecca, which Mecca the image upon its feet, that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the earth. Israel puts an end to all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. To know what will shortly come to pass, watch after is the anti-Messiah, 
part one and part two.